Historically, pitchers have used a variety of concoctions to improve their grip on the baseball. By doing so, they create more spin on the ball, leading to more movement and making it harder on opposing hitters. The use of foreign substances, specifically spider tack, rose to astronomical levels during the 2020 and 2021 seasons. For those who may not know, spider tack was originally developed for power lifters. During strongman competitions, it helps them to maintain a grip on atlas stones. Pitchers found that the rosin-based chemical mixture was an easy way to increase spin rate, leading to more success. Major League Baseball had to introduce a new policy that mandated an umpire to check the pitcher every inning. Today, I will cover five prominent pitchers who were believed to have utilized spider tack and examine the impact on their results. This video is episode one of Before and After, a new series that aims to cover controversial players and topics that change the landscape of baseball. As always, if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at camp23 underscore YT and hit the bell to enable all notifications so you don't miss any future camp23 videos. Recently, I partnered with Residency, a brand dedicated to making hats that allow you to represent your city. I am well acquainted with one of the co-owners and I can attest to the great quality of their merchandise. Currently, there are 25 cities in the US to choose from and you can get $5 off your order by using CAM23 at checkout. This is another way to support the channel, so any contributions are greatly appreciated. The link is in the description. James Karinchek is the only relief pitcher on this list. Drafted in the ninth round of the 2017 draft by the Cleveland Indians, he had a lot to prove in the minor leagues. In 2018 and 2019, he was an effective reliever with high strikeout numbers, but fell victim to walking many hitters. Karinchek was a September call-up in 2019, and in a five-game sample was excellent. In the pandemic-shortened 2020 season, the spider tack saga began, and Karinchek had an electric rookie campaign. In 27 games, he posted a 2.67 ERA and struck out 53 batters in 27 innings, good for 17.7 strikeouts per nine. That figure tied Devin Williams for the lead among relief pitchers. According to baseball savant, Karinchek was in the 99th percentile for whiff percentage. While it came in a 60-game season, his future looked promising as an upper echelon bullpen arm. 2021 is where things get interesting. The first half before the spider tack ban and the summer after. To start, Karinchek continued to be his dominant self as he posted 68 strikeouts in 39 and a third innings, equating to a 15.6 strikeouts per nine. He was especially lights out in April, allowing zero runs in 10 and two thirds innings and striking out 22 batters. At the end of June, MLB mandated that umpires check pitchers for foreign substances between every inning. Once it was enforced, Karinchek's numbers fell off a cliff. In just 19 second half appearances, his ERA ballooned to a 7.88 mark. In 16 innings, he allowed 14 runs and fanned just 10 hitters. His 5.6 strikeouts per nine were nowhere close to what he'd showcased in 2020 and the first half of 2021. Leaving spider tack behind required a major adjustment. Garrett Richards was one of the few pitchers that openly admitted to using foreign substances on the mound. After the ban, he expressed that it was like trying to figure out how to pitch all over again. For James Karinchek, the same can be said. His fastball lost 205 RPM, short for revolutions per minute. Losing 200 RPM or more can result in losing an inch of movement. In late August, Karinchek was demoted to AAA and only made one more MLB appearance the remainder of the season. He finished the year ranked number 145 out of 279 qualified pitchers in curveball RPM at 2,295. His fastball RPM was better, but still placed him outside the top 100. His whiff percentage went from the 99th percentile in 2020 to the 81st percentile in 2021. Hitters chased less often and made hard contact much more frequently. Since then, Karinchek slowly but surely regained control of his pitches, but not without some major inconsistencies. He lost a chunk of 2022 due to an injury and spent time in the minor leagues during 2023. In 78 major league innings combined, he posted a 3.12 ERA with a 13.2 strikeouts per nine. When in control, he looks like a top of the line reliever. It will be interesting to see how he performs in 2024 and beyond. 
James Caprillion was selected in the first round of the 2015 draft by the Yankees and two years later was traded to the Athletics. Caprillion may not be a household name, but he found success during his rookie season in 2021, particularly in the first half before the spider tack ban. In 11 starts, he accumulated a 2.90 ERA and struck out 66 batters in 62 innings, good for a 9.6 strikeouts per nine. By no coincidence, his second half was a nightmare. After having an all-star caliber start to the year, he posted a 5.34 ERA in 57 and a third innings. Caprillion's fastball lost 325 RPM, the biggest drop of any pitcher after June 15th. By season's end, none of his spin rates were noteworthy. The curveball ranked the highest, but was still outside the top 100 out of 279 qualified pitchers. Since 2021, Caprillion has been subpar at best. His 9.3 strikeouts per nine fell to 6.6 .6 in 2022, and there has been a noticeable increase in his walks per nine. In August of 2023, he underwent season-ending shoulder surgery. Caprillion has his work cut out for him to stay afloat in the big leagues. It might be surprising to see James Caprillion on this list, but there's a case to be made that he benefited the most from spider tack usage. He went from being an all-star level pitcher to becoming a back-end rotation arm at the drop of a dime. Garrett Cole was the number one overall draft pick in 2011. He spent five seasons with the Pirates and showed flashes of brilliance. After getting traded to the Houston Astros, he transformed into an ace pitcher. In 2018, Cole led the league with 12.4 strikeouts per nine. During this season, Trevor Bauer claimed that a majority of pitchers across the league were using sticky substances to enhance their abilities. More specifically, he called out the Astros pitching staff for a rapid improvement in spin rates. Cole was a prime example as his fastball averaged 2,164 RPM in 2017 compared to 2,379 RPM in 2018. As we'll discuss later, Cole's RPM in Houston was better than in the spider tag years. In 2019, Garrett Cole took home the ERA title, was a 20-game winner, and finished runner-up to Justin Verlander in Cy Young voting. Cole led the league with 326 strikeouts and posted an absurd 13.8 strikeouts per nine, which is a single season record in a non-pandemic year. In free agency, Garrett Cole signed a mega deal with the Yankees for nine years and $324 million. In 2020, he regressed in several aspects, but was still a top five pitcher in the league. He posted a 2.84 ERA and threw two complete games with one being a shutout. He struck out 11.6 batters per nine innings and finished fourth in Cy Young voting. There's video evidence that shows Cole's fingers sticking to his hat while reaching to grab spider tack. However, when asked by a reporter if he used it, Garrett tiptoed around the question. Quote, I don't quite know how to answer that. Cole is an enigma considering that in a year where he was using spider tack, his strikeout numbers dropped. By comparing Cole's spin rates in 2019 and 2020, it becomes evident that every one of his pitches had a lower spin rate in 2020, especially his curveball, which lost almost 100 RPM. On paper, Garrett Cole did not see any improvement from using spider tack in 2020. In 2021, he had an excellent first half. He posted a 2.68 ERA and recorded 147 strikeouts in 114 innings. In the second half, Cole struggled to limit base runners. Without spider tack, Cole's fastball lost 175 RPM. He still posted great strikeout numbers, but had a 4.14 ERA in 12 starts. In 2022, Garrett looked more like Gopher Ball Cole. He allowed a league-leading 33 home runs, but also led the league with 257 strikeouts. He finished in the top 10 for Cy Young voting, but certainly needed to make some improvements. In 2023, Cole struck out 9.6 batters per nine innings, his lowest total since 2017 with Pittsburgh. However, he was still dominant and led the league in several noteworthy categories, including ERA, starts, shutouts, innings, ERA+, whip, and hits per nine. Garrett won his first Cy Young Award, making it clear that he can dominate without spider tack. Shane Bieber was a fourth round draft pick in 2016. In 2018, he got his first shot in the majors. At times, he showcased great potential, but struggled overall to find a groove. In 2019, he was exceptional at limiting walks and pitching deep into ball games. He made his first all-star team and by season's end, led the league in complete games, shutouts, and walks per nine. 259 strikeouts and a 10.9 strikeouts per nine were merely a preview of what short season Bieber would achieve. During 2020, he limited base runners and racked up strikeouts at a historic rate. He led the league in wins, ERA, strikeouts, ERA+, FIP, 
hits per nine, and case per nine. Bieber's 1.63 ERA won him an ERA title. If you count the pandemic year, his 14.2 strikeouts per nine are the highest of any starting pitcher in a single season all time. He took home the American League Cy Young Award. The secret formula for Shane was a massive increase in RPM on his pitches. His fastball, cutter, and slider all increased by 100 or more RPM compared to 2019. His cutter went from irrelevant to ranking 21st out of 301 qualified pitchers in a year's time. In 2021, he made 14 first half starts and posted a stellar 12.9 strikeouts per nine. His 3.28 ERA was more in line with his career average. Bieber made just two starts for the rest of the year after suffering a shoulder strain that coincided with the new foreign substances policy. In 2022, he tossed 200 innings. His 12.5 strikeouts per nine in 2021 fell to 8.9 in 2022. He was still effective, recording a 2.88 ERA, but there was cause for concern. After the crackdown on foreign substances, Shane's RPM dropped by at least 100 on every one of his pitches. His fastball was three miles per hour slower in 2022 than it was in 2020. However, that has more to do with lingering effects of injury. In 2023, Shane missed a significant portion of the season due to right elbow inflammation. It was a rough season by his standards. With a 3.80 ERA, an increase in hits, decrease in strikeouts, and increase in walks, Bieber did not look like the same pitcher. His 7.5 strikeouts per nine were a measly total compared to the 14.2 strikeouts per nine he compiled in 2020 and the 12.5 mark in 2021. The injury bug and detox from spider tech have resulted in a byproduct. His breaking pitches, specifically his slider, lack the depth they had in years past. Trevor Bauer was drafted by the Diamondbacks third overall in the 2011 draft. He made just four major league starts for them before getting dealt to the Indians in a three-team trade. Bauer spent much of his Cleveland tenure as a middle-of-the-road arm with high upside. His inability to limit base runners led him to four consecutive full seasons with an ERA above four. Then, in 2018, he broke out and posted a remarkable 2.21 ERA. He struck out 221 batters in 175 and a third innings, good for an 11.3 strikeouts per nine. He made the All-Star team, garnered MVP votes, and finished sixth in Cy Young voting. In 2019, Bauer kept the high strikeout numbers, but regressed from his Cy Young form. In late July, he made a short-sighted decision to throw a ball over the fence after a rough outing. The club's decision to trade him before he hit free agency became even more of a no-brainer. After getting traded to the Reds, he struggled to keep the ball in the yard, allowing nearly two home runs per nine innings. He posted a 6.39 ERA in 10 starts the remainder of the season. He collected a 4.48 ERA between Cleveland and Cincinnati in 2019. However, the spin rates on his cutter and sweeper were especially impressive. Out of 278 qualified pitchers, he ranked 7th for his cutter and 5th for his sweeper. For future reference, his fastball ranked 48th at 2,412 RPM. Despite Bauer's poor performance in the second half, there were signs that adjustments were going to be made. The Reds signed him to a one-year deal, and it paid dividends. Bauer led the league in ERA, complete games, shutouts, ERA+, plus, whip, and hits per nine. He struck out 100 batters, good for a career-high 12.3 strikeouts per nine. He placed 10th in MVP voting and won the Mickey Mouse Cy Young Award for the National League. For those unaware, Trevor Bauer got trolled by people saying that the honor was not real because it happened in a shortened season, so he embraced the Mickey Mouse term as a badge of honor. The sharp increase in production can be largely attributed to his reworked repertoire, featuring a fastball, sinker, cutter, curveball, and sweeper, all with extraordinarily high levels of spin. Out of 301 qualified pitchers, Bauer was number one in spin rate on his four-seam fastball, sinker, and sweeper. His cutter ranked second and his curveball ranked 16th. When comparing his 2019 and 2020 spin rates, it is undeniable how substantial the difference is. His fastball increased by 367 RPM from 2019 to 2020. This unbelievable jump was certainly assisted by spider tech. The array of nasty pitches made hitting against Bauer in 2020 nearly impossible because of tunneling, a technique that involves throwing two different pitches down the same trajectory and having them end up in different quadrants of the strike zone. Bauer timed his peak performance with hitting free agency again. The Dodgers signed him to a three-year, $102 million contract. In 2021, Bauer continued to put spin on the ball better than anyone in the league. 
His fastball, cutter, and sweeper spin rates all ranked number one out of 279 qualified pitchers. In the first half, he made 17 starts and posted a 2.59 ERA. He struck out 137 batters in 107 and two thirds innings, equating to an 11.5 case per nine. After MLB announced their plans to crack down on pitchers, Bauer's RPM on his fastball dropped 233 RPM. Credit to baseball doesn't exist for posting his findings back when it happened. Due to events off the field, Bauer would not make a second half start. Ultimately, he would only play one season with the Dodgers due to a two season suspension issued by MLB for violating the domestic violence policy. In 2023, Trevor Bauer performed well in Nippon Professional Baseball with the Bay Stars, but it remains to be seen if he will ever receive another chance to play in Major League Baseball. The new rule is not foolproof, as pitchers will continue to discover loopholes and ways around policy. The way MLB went about enforcing the umpire checks mid-season resulted in a lot of frustration league-wide, including a debate regarding what was legal and what was illegal. Trevor Bauer demonstrated that by using sweat and rosin, the ball appeared as if it was glued to his hand. The spider tack era serves as a reminder that adaptation as a player is a constant challenge in order to stay effective in the big leagues. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts in the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.